Well, hello and welcome. Hey, this video is a lesson on graphing cosine and sine and all the translations thereof, like this ugly thing right here. So if you need to learn how to graph something terrible like this, f of x equals 3 times the sine of 2x plus 60 minus 2, and you can't use a calculator, no Desmos, no computer, don't even worry about it. I'm going to show you how it works in this video right here. It's all about the details. There's a ton of little details. All together, they get confusing. We're going to show you where they all come from, how they all fit together, give you a step-by-step -step process, keep you all good to go. And then in the second video, we're going to do the other way around. So if you had a graph like this and you needed to write the function or the equation that makes a graph, I'll show you how to do that in the part two. All right, so let's get into the first one, right? So here's what we're going to do. We have basically four basic things we're going to do. They kind of aren't so bad individually. First thing we got to do is figure out how far left or right the whole thing goes. That's negative C over B. That's not a big deal. That's pretty easy. Then the really easy part is how far up or down does the whole graph move? So the whole thing gets shifted up or down by that many units, whatever that number is. And then the amplitude's the one nobody has trouble with. That's just, yeah, that's how far up or down from here it goes. And then the tricky part, is you have to move the starting point of the original graph and then divide the period by four. That might not make a whole lot of sense just yet, but I'll show you step by step. Real patient, you'll get it. You'll see. Ready? Stick with us. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the parent function, like the basic old sine, or if this was cosine, we'd start with cosine. So since it's sine, we're going to make our x-axis. Our x-axis is the input, right? Input's the angle. The output is the sign of that angle. So here are all of our angles, and this will be our sine values right here for y. So since the sine of zero degrees is zero, we start off at zero, zero. Now, if it was cosine, we'd start off at zero, one, because the cosine of zero degrees is right there. It's one. So the left-hand numbers, those are cosine values. The right-hand numbers, those are sine values, right? Now, you don't have to remember very much, just 90, 180, 270, 360. That's one complete period and all of their values. So the x-axis, you're just going to put those numbers, 90, 180, 270, 360, figure out the sine values, throw them up there. It's no big deal. They're all ones and negative ones and zeros. And here's the pattern. For sine, we start off at zero, zero. We go up to a maximum, back down through the midline, have a minimum, and then back to that midline. Pretty cool. Now, if you kind of mess this up or forget it, that unit circle help keep you like organized and you can remember how it goes. I actually think that's harder than the next few steps. So the next step, horizontal shift, that's negative C over B. So negative 60 over two, right? It's the opposite sign. Don't, don't forget that. So since it's 60 over two, it's negative 60 over two. That's negative 30. So the whole thing gets moved left 30 degrees, right? So we'll tuck that away. Keep that for future reference. Now, the vertical shift is absolutely the easiest part. The whole thing gets moved up or down, whatever that is. Since that says negative two, we go down by two. That means the midline, or sometimes it's called the principal line or the principal axis is negative two. So the whole thing gets moved down two. So we went left 30, down two. And now the amplitude, the amplitude is how far up or down from this midline that the whole graph goes. And for this one, it's three. A is three. So the amplitude's three. It means it goes up and down three from here. And then last part, and this part gets a little tricky, but I'll show you. We're going to move the starting point and then we're going to figure out the rest using the period. Watch, check this out. Might sound kind of complicated, but it's it's actually all right. You'll see. So we normally start at zero, zero, right? Now we found that we're going to move left 30 and down two. So we're going to go down two right there. And then we're going to go left 30, right? So our first point is going to be right here at negative 30 comma negative two. So our first point, zero, zero, it moved over there. The reason it moved there is we went down D and then over C over B, negative C over B, and there we go, 30, negative 2. Now, got to remember the amplitude is going to go up and down 3 from this line, right? So our first one is going to be up 3, and the one over here, the second to last one is going to be down 3 from this line of negative 2. So keep that in our mind so we kind of know how this is going to look, right? But now the period changes because B is 2. So the period is 360 divided by 2, which is 180 degrees, so it's shorter. Now... We have to break that whole period up into four parts, right? Because we have a maximum, an intercept, a minimum, and an intercept. So that's one part, two parts, three parts, four parts. Now, if it's 360 degrees, you take, you take 360 divided into four equal parts. 360 
divided by 4 is 90. That's why each of these points are 90 degrees apart. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to take that 180 and divide it by 4. So we're going to get each of these is going to be 45 degrees apart instead of 90 degrees apart. Not a big deal. Watch. This is how you're going to do it. It's pretty cool. You just take that first point you just found, the starting point, and you're going to add 45 degrees to the x. Negative 30 plus 45 is 15. Wash, rinse, repeat, right? You're going to do the same thing. Find all the other points where they are on the x-axis. So 15 divided by or plus 45 is 60. <clears throat> 60 plus 45 is 105. And 105 plus 45 again is 150 degrees. So those are our those are our points, right? Now the first one's the starting point. We go to a maximum, an intercept, a minimum, and another intercept. You see how this original graph right here kind of keeps you uh, in your mind what the image will look like. All right. Now, only thing we got to be careful of is how far up and down they go. They go up or down three from here. Not a big deal. So if I take my maximum, add three. So from negative two, if I add three, I end up at one. The next one stays right where it is. It's on negative two. So we have 60 negative two. The minimum right here, we're going to start at negative two. We're going to go down three. So that's negative five. So I have 105 negative five. And last one, it's on the midline negative two. So 150 negative two. Now, I have this Desmos thing linked in the description, right? You can use this and you can try it and then play around and move all these numbers. These are sliders. So you can move them all to match your equation and you can check and see if your coordinates match. So let me move the D down. D moves the whole thing up or down. Now C is kind of interesting because as C goes to the right, the whole graph goes to the left. It's the opposite direction. That can be a little confusing. Now B is interesting as well because when B gets to be a bigger number, the period shrinks. So as B gets larger, you divide 360 by that number. So if you divide 360 by a larger number, you have a smaller result. So the period shrinks when B gets bigger. And then A is the one everybody likes because it's incredibly visual, pretty straightforward. So here's the coordinates we found. Let's see if that matches what we have. So I took a screenshot of the Desmos activity for the when we moved all the sliders, right? And then here's what we found. We found our initial point, our starting point was negative 30, negative 2. Look at that. Boom. We found our maximum, 15, 1, 15, 1. Next point was 60, negative 2, 60, negative 2. Minimum, 105, negative 5. And we ended up at 150, negative 2. 150, negative 2. Beautiful, right? Now, if you're graphing it, you're going to make a nice wave, not connecting this with straight lines. It's a curve. It'd be all beautiful, right? So to recap, here's what we got. <clears throat> you start with the parent function, you graph it, right? Put it all together, make it beautiful. Then you figure out how far left or right it goes by negative C over B. Then how far up or down it goes by this number right here. And then keep in mind what the amplitude is. So then you take these two things right here and you apply them to your original number. Take the period, divide by four, and then add that number to each of these X's to move them along. And then just apply the amplitude to those and boom, you got it. So I hope this video really helped you out. You should try some of these problems. Take notes on this. Watch it again. Watch it step by step as you try one of the problems and use the Desmos activity I linked in the description. It should really help you out, all right? So again, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how you take a graph and write the equation. But for now, that's it. Hey, I hope this really did help you. I think you can get this. You just got to have some patience with your practice. Keep a positive attitude. You'll get it.